is very special and uh, corresponding to the second day of Tevet, the 30th of December. Uh, yesterday, we started to discuss some of the ideas which are applicable in today's day, known as Zot Hanukkah Tamizbeach. So, Be'ezet Hashem today will continue in what we started, but just for the benefit of the new audience that is watching live, that yesterday the IT department was closed, so today they are open. So I'm going to devote, with your permission, the first five or six minutes to explain the greatness of this particular day. This day it's known as Zot Hanukkah Tamizbeach, the day of the inauguration of the Mizbeach. This refers when Am Israel built the Mishkan in the desert. And interesting enough, this was the reading of the Perasha of today. As you were able to follow the reading of today, today we had close to 100 Pesukim, give or take a few in the Perasha reading, going through the, going through the Korbanot of the last week of Hanukkah, plus the accounting and the beginning of Perashat Be'alotecha. Uh, so, one of the things that we came across yesterday, beautiful, one of the things that we came across yesterday was a very interesting statement discussing key dates in the Jewish calendar that are very special and very appropriate to pray. What should you should pray for? We'll answer this question in a few moments. But the three times are Mosae Shabbat Melave Malka, that's number one, Saturday night after Abdallah. Shemini Aseret, the day that we pray for rain in the day after the conclusion of Oshana Rabbah, and the day of Zot Hanukkah Tamizbeach, which is the day of today. And therefore it says, the Ta'amea Minagim quotes a book called Bene Binyamin. And it says that in this day, Borei Olam has a special level of forgiveness that is not found anywhere else in the calendar. And this level or this blessing begins when? 122 days ago. Rosh Chodesh Elul. From Rosh Chodesh Elul, we went 30 days of Elul, 22 days of Tishrei, till Simchat Torah, and from Simchat Torah, Till today, we have 70 days. If you look at these numbers that I just throw on the table, there is a hint on this concept discussed in the Perashiot. And I have the note from yesterday's class. Perasha Vayelech contains 30 Pesukim. This refers to the 30 days of Elul. Perashat Nitzavim, that contains 40 Pesukim, connects to the 40 days between Rosh Chodesh Shelul and Kippur. Perashat Ha'azinu, 52 Pesukim, from Rosh Chodesh Shelul till Simchat Torah. And Perashat Kitavo, 122 Pesukim, from Rosh Chodesh Shelul till today. Fascinating. And it says the Tamea Minagim quoting the Sefer Bene Binyamin, Sheyado Peshuta le Kabel Baale Teshuva. It says Hashem's door, hands rather, is extended to welcome anyone who wants to do Teshuva until what day? At Hanukkah. Now, let's clarify for the record. Doesn't mean that if a person wants to do Teshuvah tomorrow, you're going to tell you, come back Monday, come back next week, Hasve Shalom. The gates of Teshuvah 
are always open, but there are days that you can go on an easy pass or a sun pass without having to pay at all. You go on the express lane, etc. And he brings and he brings a beautiful source from Yeshaya Hanavi that says, Bezot Yechupar Avon Yaakov, and it says, Bezot Hanukkah. On the last day of Hanukkah, who gamar kaparat avon Yaakov. It says that today's day is a mega day for Teshuvah. What else? Who wants Parnasa? Nobody raised their hands. You must be very holy. Okay, okay, you're very humble. You, okay, you know one, only one. You can, don't don't push the, don't push it. Okay, you want Birachav Parnasa? Let's see how Parnasa blessing fits into today's day, and this is only the beginning. It's going to get even better for many many beautiful reasons, and it says as follows. Remember that I mentioned before concerning the day of Shemini Aseret. Shemini Aseret, the day that we pray for rain. And we know that whenever the number eight come across our life, eight represents something above the natural. Seven is related to the physical limitation. Eight represents the heavens and the earth. Planet Earth, one, seven levels of the heaven, that's why when it comes to Keriyat Shema, in the word Ehad, this is supposed to be our kavana, our concentration in the letter head of the Shema is the seven levels of the heaven plus the planet Earth. So we understand that Shemini Aseret, the day after Oshana Rabbah, we pray for rain. When we pray for rain, for the record, it's not only for rain, physical rain that comes from Shamayim. It means all kinds of blessings. Now, that's number one. Number two, in our daily prayers, in by Barich David, and it doesn't matter what Sidur you use. These all Sidurim, thank you so much, have, they are not universals. There are some Sidurim that have more, there are Sidurim that have less, but every Sidur has the basics. And the basics that I'm referring to, it's found in the beautiful prayer of Vaibarech David. This prayer, we stand up and we give charity in the middle of the prayer. But let's read the prayer together, but especially in a particular paragraph. The Pasuk says, Lecha Hashem HaGedula VeHaGevura VeHatiferet VeHanesach VeAhod Ki Chol BaShamayim UBaAres Lecha Monei Mamlacha VeAbindase Lechol Lerosh VeHaOsher and the wealth VeAkavod and the honor MiLefanecha it comes from you Beata Moshel Bakol and God is the ruler of everything. This is something that we say every day of our life. Rain or shine, Sephardi, Ashkenazic, male, female, all of the above, part of the daily prayer. And it says as follows, Be'a'osher be'akavod milefanecha. It says that on the eighth day, Mamshichim be'yom hashemini ashirut uparnasa. That in today's date, Shamaim has operators standing by. Call with your request. This is not something that we say every day. This is something that is enhanced by Hanukkah. That's the reason why we sang the Hallel today. Because today is the last day of Hallel with Beracha. Till when? Till the night of Pesach. Yani, for the next four and a half months, there is no full Hallel, only short version. Now, not only that, the Pasuk writes, 
ואתה מושל בכל, and you are the ruler of everything, then he brings a very, very interesting Kabbalistic concept. Okay, thank you so much. Somebody lost a wallet? Identify yourself. Not from America. So half of you remain seated. <laughs> Anyways, it's not an American wallet and does not have an American ID. Madhaf. That's why I save you your trip of checking your pockets. Okay? We do customer service. But we have here Colombia, Argentina, Montreal, Venezuela, Mexico, Panama, Italy. Italy. Good. Israel. So Baruch Hashem. Just identify yourself. I, he has a name, of course. Anyways, let's continue. So I'm very tempted to explain what he says. But it's very complicated. It's very complicated. But the bottom line is that in this sentence from Baivarech David, through, I put it in plain English, through Kabbalistic combinations of letters, it gives me the verse, Poteyah et Yadecha. Open your hands to receive Hashem's blessings. I'm going to skip the explanation because it's complicated, believe me. You need to combine three different verses and select one letter for each verse, and it gives you poteya het yadecha, and it gives you hatach, and it gives you zan. I gave you a free sample. Don't ask me later about it. Just take my word. Okay? Pray for Parnasa. Let's continue. Next blessing. Pekudat akrut. The removal of being barren. Barren... It's an expression or a word in English that means when a couple regretfully doesn't have children. And this is something that happens more often than people think. Unfortunately, the list of couples married for a few years and unable to conceive children is not getting any shorter. Regretfully, I have several names on that list. And this is a day that people should pray for those that cannot have children. And this is from the great Bnei Sahar, quoted by the Kedushat Zion. And it says, it is a known rabbinical concept from the early generations that in the eighth day of Hanukkah, it has the power to reactivate the reproductive organs of the human body to provide people with the beracha of having children. And the question is, why? What is the connection in this day? So the Bnei Sahar says the following. We know that one of the heroes of Hanukkah was known as Matityahu, Matityahu de Kohen Gadol. And the Bnei Sahar writes, Matityahu Gematria Rosh Hashanah. If you write the word Matityahu and you write the word Rosh Hashanah, it will give you the same numerical value. Not only that, and I said this last week, if you look at the word Matityahu, you can split it in two words, Matat Yahu given by the Almighty. In Rosh Hashanah, Rachel Imenu conceived Yosef. In Rosh Hashanah, Hannah conceived Shemuel Hanavi. And in Rosh Hashanah, Sarah conceived Ishaq Avinu. But not only that, the Pasuk writes, please listen to the Pasuk. Lo yebecha akar va'akara. Will come a time in history that there will not be 
any barren men or women. Not only time, the challenge is with the wife. Many times, the challenge is with the husbands. Many times, the challenge is with the wife. And we're not talking here about volume of zera, if that's what you may be thinking, but actually the quality of the zera, the, 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 the purity of the zera. So it says a very interesting concept, and it says as follows. Just try to follow me. Can you have the marker, professor? Let me have a nice color for today, blue. No, because red is the color of judgment. And green, if I use red and green, people are going to believe that we are in December 25th. So I use blue, that is the color of the heavens. Hanukkah. Hanukkah is blue. Anyways, so I'm going to write things as I speak, and then I'll show it to you. So first of all, and try to follow me mentally. They are in the Torah. How many commandments? Come on. Beautiful. How many rabbinical commandments? Plus seven. How much is that together? Beautiful. 620 is the same numerical value of the word keter. What's the meaning of the word keter? Crown. So whenever we sing in the synagogue, keter itenu lecha, that equals the 613 commandments. 613 from the Torah plus 7. By the way, you know what else equals 620? Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Imloch, Le'olam Va'ed. If you put together this verse, it gives you also 620. Can you see it on the screen? Beautiful. Beautiful. The crown of Hashem. This was the introduction. Next. Erase this, and I'll use the next one. Thank you so much. Chazaku Baruch. Next step. Ten commandments. Okay, ten commandments. So it says very clearly, how many letters are in the ten commandments? Beautiful. Chazaku Baruch. 620. Now, but actually, he says that how the Ten Commandments finishes. The last commandment is the prohibition of covering. Lot Ahmod. Desiring what someone else has. Okay? Now, how does it finish? Bechol asher lereicha. So it says, Ad, until asher lereicha, we have 613 letters. Then I have asher, that's three letters. Lereicha, four letters, that's seven. So once again, I have 613 commandments from the Torah, plus the last two words of the Ten Commandments make up the word Asher Lereicha, seven rabbinical commandments. Hence, again, I have 620. But it says as follows. Every letter of the Ten Commandments connects itself to a mitzvah. Makes sense. If we know that we have 248 positive commandments, and 365 negative commandments, altogether 613, mm -hmm. plus seven rabbinical commandments by the rabbis, that's 620 mitzvot. And Hanukkah, by the way, is one of the seven, thank you, Hanukkah and Purim are one of the seven of the hachamim. Okay? So if we begin from the last statement, that every letter represents a mitzvah. What mitzvah is mitzvah number 620? What, let's, let's, let's do this. What are the seven rabbinical commandments? Berachot, before eating. Netilat yadaim. Hallel. 
פורים with all the מזוות, includes מתנות לוויונים איש לרעהו, עירובין, and the last מזווה, חנוכה. So the מזווה of חנוכה is the מזווה 620. So the last מזווה of the Ten Commandments is חנוכה. But let's see. What letter of Re'echa is Hanukkah, according to what we are saying? If we are saying that all the letters of the Ten Commandments is a letter of the Mizvot, so when I have the last letter, what is the last letter of the Ten Commandments? Chaf. Chaf Sofit. So it says, Chaf Sofit, the Pasuk refers Lo Ihiye. Now it's going to get better. Sometimes in the original makes much more sense than when you have to translate it into a different language, but I'm going to write it. I know. I, I should compete, right? I, I don't think that I'm qualified. Let's look at the Pasuk. This is the verse in the Torah that says, Lo ye becha, becha, there should not be in you, akar means male, akara means female. As I said before, sometimes the challenge is with the husband. Sometimes the challenge is with the wife. Sometimes the challenge is with both. But you know what it says? Lo ihiye becha. It says in the letter half of the Ten Commandments, no barren people. What was the letter half connected to? To which mizvah? Hanukkah. From here he says that in the day of Hanukkah, number eight, the gates of Shammayim are open to reset the button of fertility. That fertility can be reset it in a day like today. Before I go further, some people may be listening or watching this class as we speak. We know that for a fact. Baruch Hashem. And many people will be listening to this class later, once we send the link out. And I'm sure that many of them may have a sense of regret. Rabbi, I wish I knew this yesterday night. Rabbi, I wish I knew this earlier today. Rabbi, my wife is Nida. Should I do the mizvah for the segula of today? Has shalom. The purpose of what I'm saying today is to pray. That's all. You want to be mahmir at night? That's your different story. With the tahara concept. But even in a case that the wife is Nida today, that does not prevent the couple to pray. So Be'ezat Hashem, when she goes to the mikveh, whenever her time is, and they do the mizvah, not to worry, we forget. Shamaim doesn't forget. As we say in the prayers of the high holidays, ki en shiha lifne ki se chevodecha. There is no forgetfulness in Shamaim. We forget. We delete, we erase. Shamayim also erases certain times, but they don't forget. Especially in this situation. Why? Because the Gemara in Masechet Ta'anit tells us that the key to fertility is managed by Hashem directly. Like the key of Parnassah, rain, and Tehiyat Ametim. So I think that the Kedushat Zion did a great, uh, how do we say, a, a great explanation on this. 
there was a great rabbi. His name was Rabbeinu Shelomo Halberstam. He was a leader in the Hasidic dynasty of Bobov. You probably heard of them in Brooklyn, in Israel. Wonderful group of Yehudim. And he quotes the Hallel. The Hallel that we sang so beautifully earlier today. And at the end of the Hallel, there is a paragraph that we sing together, correct? Odecha ki anitani batehi lili shua. I express my gratitude to you that I went through hardship because you are my salvation. Even ma'asu habonim, the stone that was rejected by the builders, hayeta lerosh pina, it became the cornerstone. This is part of the lines of the Hallel. And look what it says. Me'et Hashem hayeta zot, hi niflat be'aynenu. It says, Me'et Hashem hayeta zot. From this, from God, this became. He says, what is this, what the Pasuk is referring to? And it says clearly, Me'et Hashem hayeta zot, kelomar yom Zod Hanukkah. Today's day. Hini flat be'anenu. Is a day of miracles and wonders for Am Israel. That has the power to reset nature. Do you understand what is the meaning of resetting nature? We don't understand. Because we are humans. And as humans we have limited comprehension and understanding. But you know what? All these great hachamim that I quoted yesterday and today and the different verses from the Tanakh or the different paragraphs from the prayer, they all say the same thing. Don't waste the opportunity that we're not going to have till next year. Sure, Purim is coming in a few months from now. And there are other things related to Purim. But so many things in a single day, not only that. The Shari Sahar brings a very interesting pasuk. The pasuk says in Sefer Bamidbar, when Moshe Rabbeinu asked for forgiveness to Am Israel for the sins of the spies and the rebellion of Korah and company, the pasuk says, Selahna la'abon ha'am haze ke godel hazdecha ve ka'asher nasata. These are the pasuk, the letters of part of the pasuk that I just quoted. He, chaf, het, vav, nun. Ha, nu, it says that in the day of Hanukkah, Hashem activates the forgiveness to Am Israel like Moshe Rabbeinu activated forgiveness to Am Israel. And it says, why? Ki bezot Hanukkah hu gemara hatima. Miyom Hakipurim. It says because today's day is the expansion of Hatima Kipur Shehaya Peshaat Haneila. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable matters that is being brought down by our rabbis. Thank you. The truth is that, and some of the sources are a bit repetitive, but coming from different sources and different generations, and it brings a very interesting concept from the Sfat Emet. And it says, Be'yoma Haron, in the last day of Hanukkah, 
at the end of the Korbanot and the inauguration of the Mizbeah, we read Perashat Veha'alotecha. And also before Veha'alotecha, we give a recap of all of the matters that were given to the Beta Mikdash or the Mishkan, rather, when it came to the inauguration of the Mishkan. And it says as follows Mizot Hanukkah Nishar Or Lekol Yemot Hashana. It says, from the Beracha, from the blessing and the godliness that is distributed today. It gives us battery enough to last till next year. Unbelievable. So then the question is, what we should do today? What we should do today? Besides praying and having a good breakfast, you know what else he's saying today? Pray. Give charity and learn Torah. Learning we are now. Charity, you can give. And pray, yes, you have charity boxes here. But don't give me 50 cents. <laughs> Although 50 cents is a very wealthy musician, right? Yes. I don't know him, I heard of him. Alava Shalom. Okay, Alava Shalom. I'm sorry. Okay? So look what it says here. In this day of Hanukkah, a person should devote a few moments of the day to learn Torah, to pray, and to give tzedakah. As we mentioned yesterday, maybe I'll do it again, since today we have a different audience besides the regular audience here. I have the notes, so it should be very simple. Remember yesterday? Actually, let me do it in writing better. So here it says to do to do tzedakah. One of the names of tzedakah, it's also included in the word mamon. Another one is tzom. Another one is kol. Mamon, tzom, and kol. Interesting enough, there are 136, which is the numerical value collective, 408. What's the name of Hanukkah today? Zot. Zot. Hanukkah Tamizbeah. Zot, numerical value, 408. Kol Tzom Mamon. Give charity, do Teshuvah, and pray. I need to be careful not to reveal everything that I have available. <laughs> then you're going to start flying. So I'm, I'm going slowly. But it goes even further. Thank you so much. It doesn't mean you have to give $408 in charity. Or 136 The idea is to give. Give, why? Rabbein Ari writes from the book of Tehillim, Ba'ani besedek eheze panecha. It means, and I, with charity, I will see your face. Rabbi Ari says that a person who wants their tefillah should go on a smooth road, give charity before praying. That's why the wonderful ladies give charity before candle lighting. And before people have certain things or they need to do certain things, they put a few coins in memory of Rabbi Meir Baal Anes. Why they do that? Very simple. Because Maaseh of Sedaka, it paves the way. It removes the roadblocks. And then it, it, it gives the person greater opportunities to achieve that goal. So give some charity and then pray. You can pray in your car. You can pray in the synagogue. You can pray in your home. You can read from the book of Tehillim. Or you can pray in your language. In your mind, in your heart, doesn't matter. The main thing is, don't miss the opportunity that we have today. This is better than Black Friday and Cyber Monday and, and Giving Tuesday combined. Right? 
This is unbelievable. Unbelievable zehut that we have. But it says, I'm sorry. Let me see here. Anything else? I'll finish with the Divre Esh that it says that one of the elements of Hanukkah is the concept of fire. <clears throat> lighting the menorah, lighting the Hanukkiah. The fire of the Hanukkiah, although it's a physical fire, but it represents the fire of Torah, as we mentioned on Shabbat, Kiner Mizvah Ve Torah Or. The mizvah is a candle, but the Torah is the fire. So it says, during the week of Hanukkah, every neshama was ignited with fire. Our mission is to keep the fire alive. I'll quote a pasuk. The pasuk says, listen to the pesukim. Pay attention to the common word. Zot, Torat, Ahatat. Zot, Torat, Ha'olah. Zot, Torat, Zevah, Hashelamim. What is the common word in these three korbanot? Zot. You know what the Torah is telling us? In the eighth day of Hanukkah, you can climb the ladder of Torah. In the day, day of Hanukkah, you can climb the ladder of godliness. In the last day of Hanukkah, you can climb the ladder of forgiveness. And in the eighth day of Hanukkah, you can become Shalem. Common word, Zot. Torah. What was the fire we mentioned before? The Torah. This is the day of Hanukkah. Zot Hanukkah Tamizbeah. This is how the Divre Esh explains this particular concept. One more. There are different things written about what to do with the petilim, leftover, right? Leftover petilim. What do you do with them? You know what you do with them? You burn them. You, you don't bury them. No, relax. No. No. That's written about the nails. But we don't even do it. It says that a person should save the petilim and burn them with the hames on Erev Pesach together with the lulav. It is not mandatory. It's a segula. And there are those that say, and I don't see it here with me today, but there are those that say that single men and single girls, when the fire is burning the petilim, should pray for a great shiduch. I saw it in one of the books. I don't have the source in front of me, but I saw it in writing, and it's good enough for me. Something suggested. It's not mandatory. None of the things that I mentioned today are mandatory to do. But since we have this great opportunity, has shalom, we should not waste it or we should not miss it. And Be'ezat Hashem, let us hope and pray like we celebrated Hanukkah today, that very, very soon Be'ezat Hashem, Borei Olam gives us the zechut of celebrating Hanukkah Tamizbeah, the true inauguration of the third and final Beit HaMikdash, as the Pasuk says, Zehayom Asa Hashem Nagila Bo. This is the day made by the Almighty in which we're going to rejoice and we're going to be very, very happy by Ezat Hashem. So let it be that the Zechut of Zot Hanukkah and everything that we learn that Hashem fulfills 
everybody's desires to the best of everybody's decision from Shamaim. Mimera ve'yamenu. Amen. Rabbi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer, Ratzah Kadosh Baruch Hu lezakot et Israel lefichach. Irba lahem Torah mizvot sheneemar Adonai hafes lemahan sitko yagdil Torah ve'yadir kadish. Amen. 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 Yeah, Amen. 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 Amen.